Um, again, we could see a whole lot more the other day. We're going to still take in a couple of views. So you are at Snowbank Peak. This mountain that runs north from here is called West Mountain. The original name is West Mountain. And it goes all the way up and it goes to No Business um, Saddle. And then we have Council Mountain. And I think if you squint at the peak next to us, uh, so the sort of the grass in the middle ground, you can see that everything's kind of dipping about 20 degrees and it's kind of reddish brown. Yeah, those are the dipping Columbia River basalt. <laughs> and the peak behind it also has on its crest one flow of a CRB and it is also dipping away from you as you can see. So basically, all, all the, this whole range is crested by Columbia River basalt, and they all dip off to the west. All right, so off to your left-hand side. Then you get to the valley out there. That's Long Valley. So, and that's basically following the Western Idaho Shear Zone. And then you go over to the other side of West Valley, and you get the Idaho Basilisk. Long Valley itself is a robin. It has a west dipping normal fault on one side. It has a east dipping normal fault on the other side. The top has basically dropped down. All right. So that whole basin is quite deep. It's very deep in the north. It's um, we did a gravity survey to figure that out. It's about 5,000 feet. Deep, it's about a mile deep basin before you hit the basalt. It's all filled with sediments that are coming off these mountain ranges. And that's what that's about what the big basins are around here. Um, and as you look out, the, we have shallower basins to the west. You can basically make out really faintly the Cuddy Mountains, which are still in Idaho. But there's a series of basalts, they all dip to the west. If the basalt dipped to the west, and the fabric dipped, the whiz, as you now know, dipped everywhere steeply east, if you put the basalt back to horizontal, you put the, the fabric back to vertical. Basil, isn't, aren't these crust block mountains, because they, they're gradual on the, on the west side, and, and they drop off, or straight on the east, or am I wrong? Mm -hmm. So you're wrong. <laughs> you are your your geomorphology though is dead on, right? And you can walk up this thing, and then you're like you're looking off the edge of the world when you get to the edge of these things. Like the Steens. Exactly. It's exactly like the Steens mountain belt. And so the Steens, if you don't know, is a big mountain range out here in southernmost Oregon. It is what is about ten thousand eight. Ten eight. It's around there, all the way down to the Alvarado Desert, about two or three. And it's all basalt the whole way up, right? There's nothing but basalt. Here we've got the, the Payette River Tone Lights actually below it, right out there. Okay. Oops, sorry. And um, there is a little horse block in the middle. So that's the up place in an extensional system that has normal fault. That's Little Donner. So Little Donner is a horse block that sits within this overall bigger drop system. You drive over it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's asymmetrical. It dips a little bit more to the west and the east, but it's still, it's more or less that. It's a, yeah, you, you sort of drive right through the middle of it, but yeah, you come up over the east side. Okay, so anyway, so there is no Long Valley equivalent as you go north. There's not a Long Valley equivalent as you go south. It's really only here. And it's here almost certainly because the whiz is here. That this is the place where it's basically taking apart the structure of the Western Idaho shear zone. And you're basically forming that in this way. So when I started working out here, I really wanted to study the Cretaceous. And I spent about six years studying the Miocene. <laughs> because if you don't understand the Miocene, you don't know nothing about the Cretaceous because you have to figure out everything that happened backwards in time so that you can restore the Cretaceous and then start talking about what it was. That's what you said about the Eocene too, basically. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's a package deal. The only thing is the Eocene matters more to the north and weirdly also matters to the south. The, the, 
there's a big flare up. The crazy Eocene is a big deal here, but it's mostly magmatic. It's extensional a little bit, but it's mostly a magmatic event. And so um, that, that's really interesting, but it basically swings to the south. It swings out to the west as you go south. Okay, I just realized I thought of it. Is the grabbing here behind the flipper, essentially? Exactly. So the flipper to the pinball, the orifino would be up here, and you're pulling this out. And so that's why this basin is extending, right? That's the driver, because the basin range stuff's not starting until sort of further south from here. So when we did that, gonna do my, okay, in very simple terms, what happens is you have this whiz, it looks currently like this with all the normal faults being parallel to the fabric, all the basalts dipping. So this is my cartoon of this. There's the grobbin. It's the very deep part is against this side. And if you push all those basalts back to horizontal, you push the fabric back to vertical, and weirdly you put the normal faults back to vertical. Normal faults are supposed to form 60 degrees, but supposed to is not how the real world works. So they are basically, it's like books on a shelf that just slide away as you do that. The system is more complicated, which is interesting. So when we have this, when Scott Georges was mapping this, he noticed that there were cross faults. So there's two big faults, they go opposite ways. And so it pulls out. So if you look at it, for instance, the Payette River Tonal Light, the Payette River Tonal Light up where the valley is deep is on both sides. So the whiz is underneath it. Then the whiz jumps over, the valley gets shallower on this side. And then it does this weird thing, it goes back out the other way, right? And so that is snowbank. So it's where this whole range has pushed back out to the east, which is why we can be up here and look straight down Long Valley. It's because of these, these basically east-west oriented strikes of faults, because otherwise it makes no sense. West Mountain should go straight. But it's these faults, and those faults are active, this one, unfortunately, goes right through the dam at Cascade. Um, and, but, but this one is just pulling out snowbank. And so that's why it is the way it is. So Long Valley kind of ends, and then you jump over to Cascade Valley, and then you actually do one more jump over to Alpha Valley. And so because we have the gravity data, we could do a 3D block diagram. This is weird, because this is north. But um, you can sort of show how this system is working. So that's how. And again, as you go north, you, these normal faults, you stop losing them, they start reactivating like the Heaven's Gate, like we saw yesterday, and then you just lose them entirely. All right. The last place you see a lot of normal faulting is Whitebird Gray. Has anybody been up Whitebird Gray? Ooh, yeah. It's crazy. Just don't go up the old road. So you should go up the old road. It's it's worth it. <laughs> no, I can the new one. I can yeah. the new one. Yeah. So anyway, it's really quite the grade, and those are all Columbia River basalts, but there's a whole bunch of normal faults that cut right through there, and then they are cut off by the this um, late Cretaceous Mount Idaho structure. Right? So it's very complicated. So we've been trying to give you the simple version. But it's all comprehensible, basically, in terms of what's going on. What's cool about this is if this keeps going, if the Sierra Nevada keeps pushing the Blue Mountains, and if the Blue Mountains decide that they're joining, the old, the new North American boundary is going to be right here, right? It's going to push, the, which is exactly where it was in the Precambrian. So we are reopening a Precambrian boundary, basically, the rip is coming out over again. So right, it's this whole closure thing. We'd have to wait 30 million years, see what happens, who goes where, but we know the Sierra Nevada is gonna go, right? The Sierra Nevada is gonna basically join the Pacific plate more or less, and it's gonna move. And then the question is, how much is it gonna take with it? I'll put 10 bucks on the rift. All right, 10 bucks on the Rio Grande rift. <laughs> so he's going, he's going big, or going home there. <laughs> he's taking Utah with him. That might be a bad thing. I'm a Utah native, I can say that. The San Andreas is right. The San Andreas is going to keep moving, but really, if you line up the Gulf of Mexico, it's going to pull off the 
Sierra Nevada. I mean, that's the that's the hypothesis is it's likely going to take the Sierra and pull it because that wants to go straight rather than going around that huge band at the um, transverse ranges, which is where the big that's the big band is where the earthquake the big one's going to happen, right? But it's it's trying to get the movement to go up Walker Lane. I didn't realize Sierras were going north. And the Sierras are going north. You can geodatically they're moving ten millimeters per year north. So you should all move to Reno and buy your soon to be beachfront property. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that Lex Luthor's plan too? Oh, somebody got Whoops. stepped on. Sorry. You okay? Yeah. This tail was just Sorry, buddy. <laughs> all right. Well, that. Yeah, please. Have you uh, talked about Klamath at all? The Klamath Falls. Does that have any bearing on uh, Idaho? So the Klamath Mountains are kind of a weird one. They they're um, they're a very complicated piece of real estate, and I'm going to give you the short version why. As you move north, I keep talking about the town of Orofino, right? Because everything's going to get stuck at Orofino because everything wants to move north. But the northward motion of the Cordillera does not start till 100. Everything before then seems to be south. And the thing that sticks out farthest is California, and the thing that sticks out on the corner is the Klamath. So the Klamath gets walled by everything that's trying to get by North America. So it has all these crazy terrains, and it's getting whapped up all the time. And, it's, but it, and then it's dead and stops at 100. After 100, the Klamath is like the most boring place in the world. Could you tell me that we had an awesome question. <laughs> you had an awesome question. Hey, wow. scored. <laughs> so all these current terrains are complicated. Are any terrains around here simple? <laughs> well, that's an interesting question. Stacia might disagree. The insular is the easiest terrain to understand at all. Celestia is not too bad. Celestia is actually pretty yeah. good, actually. <laughs> it just kind of goes in, yeah, finds a hole, well, goes in. Yeah, Yakutat's not easy. No, it's all complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I am about done with the geology, and I think people are about done with geology, too. Do you want to say something at this point? I'd like all four of you to be there so we can get pictures of you. <laughs> okay. We can do that. But... I get that the photograph. I know it's just a, kind of like. First off, can we thank Basil for leading the charge? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. How about Ellen Nelson? Yeah. Yeah. Yes! And Stacia Gordon? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Sorry, Stacia, the Big dog center. didn't vote for you. Leslie from Boston. Yeah. And so many more of you, so we could go on and on and clap for each of us. But I mean, it's it, it, that's really what this is. This is a community. As I was just walking with Basil from one of the places to where we were all congregating, I said, this is like the live chat has come to life. Like, <laughs> all those scrolling names and, name yeah. and, and text comments, they're, they're all happening here together. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. We love you. You've given us life. Okay, so. Um, Leslie, I think, should take over right now and talk about some logistics. Let's get our pictures first. The, 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 the photo, photo of the four awesome people. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> the new dream team. The blue team. The Fantastic Four. That's what this is. It's the wizards. It's the wizards. Get in close. Pretend you like each other. 
No, no, I, I think the Wizards is a good name. <laughs> Eat the mic. Oh. Eat, eat the mic. <laughs> Guys, it's been terrific. I can't say that I could have done this by myself. I've had the team, the committee, you got each other into the cars. I'm really impressed. So tonight, let's celebrate a little and uh, have we have pizza at the toll station. toll station pizza. And across the street is the... Salmon River Brewery, yes. And please wear your name tags. <laughs> yes, yes, name tags, please. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm going to put the team, our dream team, on the spot because Mike and I are going up Brundage tomorrow on the ski lift <laughs> and inviting anybody to go. But do we have a geologist with us or not? What time are you going? At 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is when they open, so we're going at 10. Anybody wants to join us on Brundage? I have, I have, um, I have Basil's original description of what's up there that I can read to anybody. I'll become mini, mini Basil, uh, possible. <laughs> anyway, um, we're, if anybody wants to join Mike and me tomorrow on Brundage, we're going to try to get there. They open at 10. Of course, you could take it any time you wanted to. Anyway, that's just a, a... We'll have a geologist there. We'll have a we'll geologist have a there geologist at 10. At 10. So, don't, don't want to put you guys in the spot because you've got a conference. If, if you can make it, that's terrific, but we understand you've you know, got a much more important thing than a... If one of us will be there. It'll be it'll be our pleasure. So not to worry. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. It's that we, we have to buy a ticket. Can you Google...